Welcome to Brain Secrets in the Age of the Brain. I enjoy sharing informational bits about the human brain that the science of brain function has uncovered, and I love to call them Brain Secrets. There are always several during holiday seasons. This one definitely applies to gift giving at holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, and for special occasions. Selecting a gift that you believe the receivers would enjoy and that matches who they are individually can be a challenge. It's worth the work. Once selected, wrap it. That's because the emotional motivator of surprise intensifies the emotion of joy. If the recipient likes the gift and it also was a surprise, the intensity of their joy is increased. A study reported that those who received wrapped gifts rated them more favorably. Gifts that were nicely wrapped were liked better than unwrapped or non-traditionally wrapped gifts. If you can't wrap the gift due to the size, find some other way to conceal the gift until the moment of reveal, because that can result in the same effect. Today's episode features a brainstorm idea that Asia Hudson, assistant producer of Brain Secrets, came up with. Together, she and videographer Grant Gilmore pulled it off beautifully. I'm excited for you to see it. All right, I think we're about ready to go. Grant, Asia's not here. She's usually here before I am. Where is she? I'm ready, but I don't see her. Oh, she's, um, she's actually grabbing her glasses right now. Her glasses? She doesn't wear glasses. Today she does. Okay. <laughs> here I am. What do you think about my glasses? <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, Asia. I wondered what he was talking about. Those are so fun. Thank you so much. I try to stay in the Christmas spirit. Grant, do you like my glasses? I love them. That didn't feel sincere, but Arlene <laughs> loved them, so that's all that matters. <laughs> I think that was male speech for, I think it's really that appropriate. That male speech. Yeah. I love the holiday look. Thank you so much. I thought I would bring some cheer to set. I will take them off because this is a professional environment and I'm trying to do the best I can to keep this job that I love. So I'll just put them, I'll put them here. Well, I wondered when Grant said, she's gone to get her glasses and I'm going, she doesn't wear glasses. Okay, so welcome to this side of the camera. Thank you. And I'm telling you, we have a really fun program today. Yes. You had a brilliant idea when we were talking about what can we do for a holiday special that's a little bit different. How did you come up with the idea that you came up with? Well, like, I guess I'm so used to us traveling and going all these different places to bring Ask Dr. Taylor to the office. I thought, why not? incorporate the office and ask Dr. Taylor and get some opinions from the people that we work with. And I, I hadn't met so many of the people, like especially downstairs, because I think that's new. So that's it was really the nice. Cognitive Care Center, mm -hmm. mental health. Yeah, so it was really nice to be able to like meet everybody down there and then also mingle with everybody up here and bring them into what we do. And I thought it would make everybody feel really special and we're a family here, so I really, wanted to emphasize that by incorporating them into our episode. Well, I think it was brilliant because I had no idea that the people I work with every day would enjoy it so much. I guess it's because I'm just used to working here and, you know, thinking about, well, I wonder, I wonder how they'll feel about this. And they had a blast. Amazing. I'm so happy to hear it. We, t we had a great time too. Like it was so fun doing it here at the office and running into people. And it was just great. 
It was so much fun. Well, now you're going to have to up that somehow next year for the holiday special. I already have the pressure bearing down. I'm <laughs> right. trying to figure it out. What are we going to do? A lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm just amazed at how easily you do what you do. Thank you. It doesn't matter whether you're out on the street in Atlanta or California or New York. And here we are in a huge building, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. You do what you do, when you do it, where you do it, and I just think that's very special. Thank you so much. It's easy to be inspired by like you and our working environment and all of our coworkers, so I just had such a good time bringing them into it. It was really nice. And as I understand, we've got questions for three holiday specials. Yes. And you haven't had to do much traveling. Just up and down the hall. <laughs> Just up and down the halls. Well, and there are several entities that we work with here. Right. So you, you hit them all. Yeah, I'm excited for us to go through this episode and you like to see what you, to see in more in depth what you saw transpiring when we were here. So is there anything you want to say before we see if Grant's ready to roll? The video. Shout out to all of our coworkers. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you so much for participating in this episode of Ask Audra Taylor. I had to say that to the camera so I could say that to them when they watch this. I think that's just great. Yay. Bye, guys. <laughs> or hi. All right, Grant, where are we for the videos? Everything's all set up, ready to go. Oh, I just love it when you say that. All right, let's see. Let's see how they go. Awesome. What's up, y'all? And welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Taylor, where we take to the streets and ask random people questions about brain function. But today's plot twist is that we're not actually in the streets. We are actually in the building where Dr. Arlene Taylor resides. And we're going to be asking our fellow co-workers questions that they want to ask our resident brain function specialist. So here we go for our happy holiday special for Christmas. All right, let's see what kind of questions we can get. Oh my gosh. Hi. How are you doing today? Doing well. Awesome. Awesome. If you could ask a brain function specialist, Dr. Arlene Taylor, a question about brain function, what would you ask her? Hmm. What happens in the brain whenever you experience anxiety? Sight? Anxiety. Oh, anxiety. Huh. Okay. What happens in the brain whenever you're experiencing anxiety? Awesome. Thank you so much. And then we have a little bag of treats. You want some? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, candy gets it every time. A candy cane and a lollipop. Let's go. Okay, next. Anxiety begins in your brain. You experience it through your thoughts. It also impacts brain chemistry that can affect how your body functions. You may get physical symptoms when you don't consciously even feel anxious. Some individuals are actually born with a higher risk for developing anxiety symptoms due to an imbalance with some neurotransmitters. Serotonin, for example, is one neurotransmitter that seems able to trigger anxiety when it is dysregulated. The problem is, it's difficult, if not impossible, to figure out cause and effect or to distinguish between neurotransmitter imbalances due to genetics versus as a result of an individual's life experiences and choices. Anxiety is part of the emotion of fear. It can take over one's life if it becomes a habit, as the brain wants everything to be congruent, to match. Learning how to manage fear appropriately can be helpful in dampening down anxiety. Somebody's looking studious. It's AJ. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? Fantastic. Happy to see you here today. Oh, 
Happy to see you too. How are you? Great. I know what we're doing seems a little random, but we're taking our Ask Dr. Taylor from the streets into the building where our Dr. Taylor resides. So I'm going to ask you a question. Is that okay? That's perfectly fine. Right on. So the question is, if you could ask a brain function specialist, Dr. Arlene Taylor, a question about the brain, what would you ask her? <sighs> Let's see. Uh, how best can you combat imposter syndrome? That's a really good question. So something I didn't tell the viewers is that whoever has the best questions, we're going to be giving out antlers in celebration of them and their amazing questions. So you're honestly at the top of the list right now. Awesome. And but also you get candy. Oh, perfect. All right. Let's see what I get. Glance and Imes used the term imposter in a 1978 paper published in the journal Psychotherapy. They defined the syndrome as, and I quote, an internal experience of intellectual phoniness, attributing their successes to external factors out of their control rather than to their own skills and talents or expertise, end quote. Those with a social anxiety or generalized anxiety disorder are more likely to succumb to this syndrome, as are those who are perfectionistic. Although the original study involved 150 females, later studies at Vanderbilt made it clear that it applies to males as well. Look for successful role models who come from a similar background and who acknowledge their struggles to achieve. You never do it alone. Humbly acknowledge those who helped you and realistically recognize that success is not a fluke. Give yourself credit for putting in the blood, sweat, and tears, and time to hone your talents and develop expertise. Then use it to help others. Let's see who else there is. This is a dead end. <laughs> I've never actually been down this hall. This is a dead end. Did you know that? Okay, let's go. Hi! Hi! Oh, perfect timing. So we're doing a Christmas special today for Ask Dr. Taylor. And so we're going to ask our coworkers some questions. So the question is, if you could ask a brain function specialist a question about brain function, what would you ask her? I actually work across the hall from Dr. Taylor, so I ask her a lot of questions. But I do have one that's been burning that I haven't been able to yet. And that is, how quickly does a decision take place inside your brain? And where in the brain do decisions actually occur? Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Okay, so we have a, I have a personal bias. Every time we do a new episode of Dr. Taylor, I'm like, this is the best place we've ever done an episode. And I think here today in the office has been the best place we've ever done an episode and the vibe is immaculate. How are you feeling? I feel terrific. I love it. It's Friday too, which also helps. Yay, and then you get candy. <laughs> I love candy. Yay! Okay, so what Good question. Two decisional symptoms have been identified. One is fast and emotionally charged. It allows for split-second decisions when under pressure and involves the basal ganglia in the midbrain and the sensory cortex. These implicit knowledge decisions are automatic or habitual based on learning and practice, as in playing a fast basketball game. This system, however, is not the best for decisions that need one preferable answer. The other system is analytical, deliberate, and rational. It allows for considering consequences before you act. These explicit knowledge decisions rely on memory systems in the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus. Under stress or pressure, however, you may choke and make an inferior decision. Interestingly, seven to 10 seconds before you have conscious awareness of your decision, the brain already knows what you likely will choose based on previous decisions. The moment you become consciously aware of your decision is when you have conscious choice. You can follow through or course correct and make a different decision. 
being around my fellow and beloved coworkers is definitely giving me a sense of pre-holiday cheer, even though it is not quite yet Christmas. <laughs> I love this. Let's see what else we got. Hi. <laughs> so we're doing a special today. And we're doing Ask Dr. Taylor in this the office. This really fun. So the question is, if you could ask a brain function specialist, Dr. Arlene Taylor, a question about the brain, what would you ask her, Miss Lorraine? Uh, well, I always say, well, not always, I shouldn't say always, but when I go home, I'll, I'll say, oh, my brain is fried. Can we say that? <laughs> That's a good question. So, like, what does it mean when your brain is fried? Exactly. Yes, what does it mean when your brain is fried? <laughs> Amazing, thank you. And then we've got, we're spreading some holiday oh, cheer. Cool. Here you go. Take a dig, take a look. It doesn't have to be mysterious. <laughs> and you, you can have another one if you like. Okay, I'll take it. It's a pretty full bag. Yes, it's a full day today, so. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Being brain fried is a synonym simply for mental fatigue. It can occur when your brain is stressed, overwhelmed, overworked, sleep deprived, dehydrated, having a blood sugar low, or trying to do everything flawlessly. It can occur from negative thinking, worry and anxiety, a lack of sufficient oxygen to your brain, or from insufficient physical exercise that is needed to replenish endorphins, or from attempting to multitask, which stresses the brain and increases mistakes, which require redoing tasks. The brain is literally physically tired from the overload of work. You've asked it to do, and it's telling you it's reached its limit. Symptoms may include an inability to think clearly, a lack of motivation to continue doing mental or cognitive tasks, and exhaustion to the point of feeling discomfort. Pay attention and correct negative behaviors. Take time. Give your brain enjoyable breaks. It's too valuable to waste. This is going extremely well. I just thought of somebody else really important we could interview. These are the puppets that we sometimes use for other segments. And let's ask Miss Ash Oleander if she has a question for our brain function specialist. Ash? I thought that was exactly what she would do. She is, she can't be bothered unless she's being paid. Hmm, that's okay. You, you need some more holiday cheer. Let's go. I'm going to barge in on whoever's in the bathroom. Just kidding. It's Arlene! Were you, rec were you, were you recording? <laughs> Hi! Okay. So we've been around here asking questions for Ask Dr. Taylor. And even though you are Dr. Taylor, if you could ask yourself as Dr. Taylor, what would you ask yourself, Dr. Taylor? <laughs> You're something else. <laughs> if I could ask myself a question, it would be, once you got interested in the brain, how come you were not really centered on learning more about it for another four or five years? That's an interesting question that we'll send back to your desk and have you answer. And I'm supposed to answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. Very good. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Taylor. We'll see what Dr. Taylor says. Okay. What's fun is I never even asked myself that question before. I remember being five years old and fascinated with pictures about the brain in an encyclopedia I discovered in my father's library. For days, I pored over that book and then it disappeared. Poof. I searched everywhere and never found it. Fifty years later, my Victorian-style mother admitted that she had told my dad to hide it because it also contained drawings 
makes me laugh, of naked men and women. Go figure. If she had had any idea of what I would see and do in nursing school, she probably would have tried to make me become a teacher. I first went to a regular school in the sixth grade. Glory be if the teacher didn't talk about the brain in biology class. I loved it. After that, I spent what time I could in the school library. It had an encyclopedia. I suppose one could say, and the rest is history. Hello, hello. This is our wonderful food bank, and this is Alma. And so, Alma, if you could actually introduce what this room is, that would be amazing. Hi, good morning. Um, this room is uh, to help people for whoever needs food. And they come, sign in, and grab a basket of the food. Amazing. And then let's show them the vastness of what we're offering here. This is community work. If you could ask a brain function specialist, Dr. Taylor, a question about brain function, what would you ask her? What makes people behave the way that they do? That's a great question. What makes people behave the way that they do? So how many reasons do you want? One, they learn behaviors in childhood and turn them into habits. Two, they have addictive behaviors and their brains are addled. Three, they copy behaviors seen on TV or in the movies because they think it's cool. Four, they've experienced adverse childhood experiences or abuse in adulthood and have not healed the hurt, so strike out at others. Five, they have a mental disorder such as Narcissism, borderline personality disorder, or antisocial personality disorder, or schizophrenia, or other mental illnesses. Six, they feel powerful when they get angry, blame others, are unkind, controlling, or abusive. Seven, they have low to no emotional intelligence. Eight, they have little, if any, empathy and charge through life like a bull in a china cabinet. Nine, they've not forgiven themselves or others, therefore treat themselves and others badly. And ten, their behaviors result in their getting what they want. I don't think we've ever met. What's your name? Pedro. Pedro, hi. I'm Asia. Nice to meet you. If you could ask a brain function specialist a question about brain function, what would you ask her? I would ask, um, what foods should I avoid uh, if I want to have a healthy brain? And what foods should I look for? Speaking of food and health, I have candy. And what's better for the brain than candy? <laughs> would you like some? <laughs> Almost okay. anything. Dr. Taylor, please don't be mad at us because I know we just asked a health question. There is an increasing body of research that points toward healthier foods for brain and body. Avoid refined and processed foods and desserts that are high in white flour, fat, and sugar, as sugar is a toxin to the brain. Avoid fried food and fast food and saturated fats. Avoid beverages that are high in sugar or contain artificial sweeteners. Avoid processed and red meats and alcohol in any amount, as it is now linked with several types of cancer. Instead, make water your beverage of choice and stay well hydrated. Eat seeds and nuts, avocados, whole grains, vegetables, fruits, especially berries, in as natural a state as possible. If you want to eat meat, try turkey and salmon. Hey, how you doing? Hi. <laughs> Great. So we're doing a segment for Ask Dr. Taylor, and I'm going to ask you a question.
That was pure pleasure, Asia. <laughs> awesome. I had the best time listening and watching to the people ask their questions and watching you move from one to another. You know what I'm going to ask you next. Mm -hmm. What's my favorite question? What is your favorite question? Uh, my favorite question... There's so You may have had more than one. There were so many. Um... Okay, well, I really loved AJ's imposter syndrome question. I think that sometimes I deal with imposter syndrome, so I really love the way... Most people do. Yeah, I love the answer that you gave for that. I love that he, that was the first thing he thought about, because that's not a question I've thought to ask. So I was really happy about that. And um, also, I thought it was really funny, because I was like, let me go barge in the bathroom and see who's in there. And I did not expect you to come out. So when I saw you, I was like, oh my God, like now I have to ask her a question because I can't waste this moment. So I'm, I'm really happy that I got to run into you well, as well. Well, I had no idea you were gonna do that either. <laughs> I know. Me neither, I was so surprised that you came out of the bathroom. Well, I wasn't gonna be holed up in there the whole day. <laughs> well, it just, it just seemed so like perfect that it well, seemed like it, it was staged. Well, it was not planned. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But, you know, as I thought about that, and what am I going to say to this question, I never remember anybody asking me that question before. Hmm. And I certainly have thought about it since. And so when you said, as interested as you were in the brain, why did nothing happen for another, you know, several years? Well, because I was homeschooled, mm -hmm. and in my environment, nobody talking about the brain, how could you nurture that interest? Right. And I think that happens to a lot of young people. And I, what I have to say is, if you're really interested in it, hang on to that. Because the minute I went to school in sixth grade, and the teacher started talking about the brain, Forever after, I made ways to learn about the brain. Amazing. Yeah, and I'm so happy that you do because you're teaching us all something every time we have one of these. Well, let me tell you, I learn something every time myself because people ask questions I never thought of. So I guess we could sit here and chat all day, but yeah. we can't. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited with this first episode. There's two more in our holiday special, so it will be continued. Yes. And our viewers will get to see some of the other questions that were asked. Thanks again, Asia. Of course. Thank you for letting me borrow your phenomenal scarf. You may borrow any scarf I have any time. <laughs> okay. And thank you, our viewers, for watching. Until the next episode of Brain Secrets Ask Dr. Taylor, remember that the emotional motivator of surprise enhances the strength of any emotion. When giving gifts to others, surprise can increase the receiver happiness. Use the emotional motivator of surprise judiciously to strengthen the emotion of joy. That's a brain secret.